Hi Capricorn and welcome. I hope you're doing fine. Let's have a look what the month of August has in store for you. Let me just shuffle the cards. So, the first card is the Four of Wands, which is your motivation, energy, and passion. The second card is the Page of Swords. Swords stand for your thoughts, for your words, and your action. And the third card is the Queen of Pentacles. Now, Pentacles represent your finances, your work, and your material possession. This looks like a very, very nice spread. So this month promises, promises to be transformative for you, uh, for you Capricorns. It is filled with deep emotional bonds and profound understanding. I'll explore the intricate path of your destiny, digging into the heart of what the universe has in store for you. So get ready to embrace the unexpected, navigate challenges and celebrate victories. Let's dive into the mystical world of tarot and uncover the secrets that August holds for you. So the first card is the Four of Wands. This is an absolutely beautiful card. Wands stand for energy, for motivation and for passion. In numerology, four means structure, stability and manifestation. Now the Four of Wands signifies celebration, joy, harmony, relaxation, and homecoming. So this card shows two happy people dancing and celebrating with flowers in their hairs. In the foreground, a beautiful uh, wreath with blossoms and grapes is suspended be between the four ones. It looks like a chupa, uh, which is a canopy under which a couple stands when they get married, and it is symbolic for a new home. So, all together, these elements represent the joy and satisfactions that comes with achieving an important goal or milestone, uh, a homecoming of some some sort. In the background, you see the a castle, which is a solid background, a big manifestation of the solidity and stability and people that are celebrating with you. It's a card of joyful celebration, of bliss and happiness and appreciation for the good things in life. It means that now is the perfect time to celebrate with those who are close to you. You may celebrate an important event or a milestone. This could be a wedding or a birthday or a homecoming or a reunion. But it could also mean that you may invite your favorite friends over for no particular reason except for to enjoy each other's company. Basically, this card is telling you to let your hair down, relax, enjoy this special time together. It could also mean that you were away from your loved ones and now you return home to the people and places that you're familiar with. The people who make you feel supported and safe. The card is closely linked to the home environment. It could mean that you may work on improving or renovating your home or that you're thinking of finding a new home. Perhaps you re recently bought a new house or, or apartment and you are getting ready to settle in. This card tells you that after a period of rapid growth and expansion, which is actually the energy from the previous card, the Three of Wands, it's now time to rest and celebrate what you have achieved so far. Just take a moment to relax and enjoy your achievement. 
allow yourself and give yourself permission to take a small break before you continue on the next step of your journey. It's important that you take note of these smaller miles, mi milestones. Now, as I said before, four symbolizes structure, stability and manifestation. You have implemented structure into your life, which is also represented by the, the castle here. And now you can enjoy a period of happiness and stability. You may feel a sense of harmony and balance as well as completion. This is a time of peace and contentment that is the result of your hard work. It could mean that you're working on a project and that you reach an, impor that you reach an important milestone that you can celebrate soon, like hitting a, a sales target, a work anniversary, or celebrating a promotion. If you have already achieved something, it could be a personal gratification of a job well done. You reached a goal and you realized a vision. It's something that you can celebrate with your colleagues and even with your superiors. It's a really highly positive and social time. Everyone is coming together to acknowledge your hard work. Maybe you had to put your work first for a while, working long hours at the expense of your family and social life, and now you can celebrate what you have with your family and friends again. You should be cautious though, um, not to take the su success for granted and let it get to your head. Don't assume it will all be plain sailing from here on. Yes, you earned your kudos, but don't forget that you need to continue from here. You need to continue to perform well and you need to keep growing. You seem happy where you are, where, where you are. so a career change is not, uh, does not seem to be on the cards for you right now. Remember that the Four of Wands is a minor arcana, so this is not a long-term situation. This card could also mean wonderful news. Um, your hard work has paid off, now you will be rewarded. That could mean a pay rise or dividends or a bonus. When it comes to relationships and love, this card implies that you spread positive energy. It's a time of peace, of harmony and stability. You are genuinely grateful for everything that you share, that you share together and you like to celebrate it with those close to you. If you're looking for love, this card is absolutely brilliant. It suggests that you find someone soon who will make you very happy. There's a high possibility that this relationship will be stable and that it has potential. It could be that you meet this person at a celebration or through people who are very close to you. For those of you who are in a relationship, it's also great news. You have built a solid foundation together and your relationship is moving along to the next level. The energy that flows between you is freely, it runs freely. You're in sync with each other and maybe you're thinking of taking it to the next level. This card is often a sign of engagement or marriage. It could also mean that you move in together or even think of starting a family. It's asking you to reflect back on your journey and be grateful. Appreciate how far you have come in this journey and also be grateful for your relationship with others. When it comes to your health, the Four of Wands indicates good health and well-being. You may even be able to celebrate a recent accomplishment that is related to your health. This could be that you achieved your target weight, that you got the all clear for an illness, or that you hit or even exceeded the sports targets target that you wanted to achieve. Maybe you ran your first ever marathon or lifted a weight that you didn't think you were able to. So ask yourself, what am I celebrating? How can I spend more time with my loved ones? And what makes me happy and content? So let's have a look at the second card. The second card is the Page of Swords. It's another great card. The Page of Swords stands for new ideas, for curiosity, uh, thirst of knowledge, and new ways of communicating. 
This card shows a young man standing with his sword pointing upwards to the sky. His body and the swords lean in one direction, but he looks the other way, as if to see what else is happening around him. The breeze that ruffles his hair um, and the clouds that move fast in the sky imply a dynamic energy. The page stands in, in green and fertile ground, suggesting that his plans and ideas are likely to bring positive change and forward momentum and lead to fruition. This is a card full of energy and passion and enthusiasm. It could mean that you have lots of new ideas and plans for the future. You may feel excited about starting a new project, try out something new or learn something new. This energy makes you feel that you're unstoppable. You think you can do it almost anything, and you can. The question, however, is if you can keep this energy up. As with all the pages, the beginning always looks fantastic and promising, but you need more than just enthusiasm to follow through and keep the pace. This card often shows up when you're exploring a new way of thinking. Now, this could be a new idea, a new perspective, new knowledge, or a new technique of something. You're curious and thirsty to learn. Swords are linked to communication. This could mean that you ask lots of questions and gather as much information as possible because you're still learning. You most likely make mistakes along the way, but you're curious and you're prepared to learn from, from your mistakes. Maybe you're exploring different ways of expressing yourself with others to bring, you, to bring over your ideas and opinions. It could be that you're thinking about public speaking, um, writing a book or a blog, starting a podcast, or being more vocal on social media. You are a natural communicator. Some might even say you have the gift of the gab, and you're ready to take the next step to share your message with the world. Just stay open to new ways of expressing yourself and explore them so you can discover where your talents lie. So if you thought of writing a book, I know we are in a stage of AI and all the rest of it, but this is not going to really reflect your personality and everything. So just give it a go. If you want to, if you want to start a, a, a YouTube channel or make videos on TikTok or whatever, just try it out. I mean, there's nothing to lose at the end of the day. If you're looking for a sign that you should move ahead with a new project, this card says, just go for it. Um, be aware that there will always be challenges with whatever you choose. Not everyone is going to be thrilled with your choices, but when push comes to shove, you need to follow your passions and go with your true feelings and your energy. Do what feels right. You know, follow your gut feeling, your instinct. This card prompts you to move forward and get the wheels in motion. So it doesn't matter what challenges or setbacks are in front of you. Just go for it. Just do it. This card could also mean that you come across someone who's exploring their ability to communicate, who want to share their ideas and gather information. Now, most likely this is going to happen in a work situation. It could be someone who's mega enthusiastic, who's brimming with energy and continuously trying to share their observations and opinions and, or ideas. You may have moments with this person. There could be a level of tension or conflict with, with that person because you probably find that they are way too energetic for you. If you feel there may be too much to handle, uh, give yourself a break from this person for a while, but don't cut them off because they have a lot to share with you. Just try and take on a mental role, but stay open and listen. Even though they are often more in inexperienced than you, they can probably teach you something about yourself. If you're looking for a, uh, for a job or you're contemplating a new career, you probably have a strong desire to communicate and express your ideas to everyone. And even though this is not necessarily a bad thing, bear in mind you are new to the game. So don't try and tell your future potential boss how to suck eggs. He's not going to like it, okay? 
even though it's great to be confident, make sure that you take the advice of those who are more experienced or knowledgeable. In terms of finance, you may be excited in pursuing a new financial opportunity. Um, there's lots of things around that promise you everything. These opportunities rely on your intellect and on your knowledge. It could be an online business or to learn about network marketing or to generate more income. Again, keep in mind that you are new to the game and even though you may feel compelled to take risks, it's often, it often helps to ground yourself before you dash forward. So don't just go blindly into new things. Think about it. The same applies if you're looking for love. You're probably very enthusiastic and proactive. You may have a bit of an attitude and put yourself out there to get to know as many people as possible. But don't forget, this can be a little bit annoying to some. You're prepared to engage in conversations with other people. You want to learn about them. You ask them lots of questions. You're also looking for discussions that go beyond the typical, so what do you do for a living? You want something more profound and insightful. This is absolutely wonderful and great, but bear in mind not to talk the, the back legs of a donkey. The page of swords shows that you love to talk. So just watch that you do not spend the whole day talking about yourself. Give the other person a chance. This is a give and take. It's, it shouldn't be a, a monologue. The other person wants to find out things about you as well. It could also mean, this card could also mean that someone you have recently met actually has these qualities. And if it gets too overbearing for you, just take a break, walk away for a little bit, but don't dismiss everything that they say, because again, you may miss out on an important lesson that you need to learn for yourself. For those of you in a relationship, this card suggests that the relationship is relatively new. You are probably enjoy lively conversations and share ideas with your partner. You love to put the world to rights. You can talk about absolutely anything. The relationship is probably bursting with energy and enthusiasm. Of course, the key will be, can you sustain this energy in the long run? Um, the page of swords could even stand for a young family member who's influencing a relationship. This is particularly true if kids are involved. So little kids, they are absolutely wonderful. But yes, sometimes they can be a little bit annoying because they will ask you over and over and over and over. I know it from my, from my own grandchildren. I love them to bits, so please don't misunderstand. But I'm, I'm not even in the door. And it's, Nana, shall we do this? Can you play with me? Can you, have you heard? And so on. So... Sometimes you just need to say, okay, I love you lots, but let, let me give, just give me a moment, okay? And then you can carry on. When it comes to your health, um, it implies that you are so caught up in, in your things, in your head, that your mind is racing all the time. You might actually find it really hard to stop and relax. Again, this is a time to put a break on things for a short while because otherwise you're going to exhaust yourself in the long run. So don't burn the candle at both ends. Ask yourself, how can I express and communicate better? What options do I have? What new ideas interest me? Which new things can I learn? This is a really great card. It's very positive. Um, it's telling you that you're moving forward. So, Let's move on to the last card in the spread, the Queen of Pentacles. That looks really, really nice as well. It's a beautiful card. It uh, stands for nurturing, for, pra uh, for being practical, for providing financially, um, a working parent. In the Queen of Pentacles, a woman is sitting on a throne which is decorated with carvings of fruit trees. There's goats and angels and other symbols of material success and, and pleasure. She's cradling a gold coin with both hands and looks down on it with loving care as if she's trying to nurture it. It's a symbol of wealth and material success. 
the luscious plants and flowers that surround her represent her connection to Mother Earth, to nature, to abundance. Um, the small rabbit that we can see here, which jumps off where she's seated, that symbolizes fertility and suggests that her life is, is in flow and is aligned. Now, the Queen of Pentacles comes across as a warm, kind person. She's a nurturer, someone who gives genuinely, who genuinely cares and who loves to see others do well. She is a great homemaker, someone who shows her love for others by cooking delicious meals, who's house proud, who maintains a clean and inviting home, and someone who loves to cuddle or hug, hug people to console them. She's an empath. She might be a touchy person who expresses her emotions by patting somebody's hands or by giving them a hug. Don't misunderstand though, she is not just the perfect housekeeper. This person also works, often works a full-time job and contributes financially. Often she's the primary breadwinner. She's a master in taking care of the practical needs. This could be at work, at home, or with her family. She's always around to give love and support to those who care about, she cares about. These people often have a job um, caring for people, whether this could be customer care, customer support, nursing. It could also be a teacher or somewhat, something related with caring for others, but most often she is in a leading position. This card embodies the ultimate working parent. It is important for her to be independent, to have a stable income and to have enough time to look after her loved ones. She deeply cares for her family and thrives in doing her domestic chores, but also in making a living for herself and to create financial stability for her family. This is a person who can maintain a healthy balance between home and work. She has integrated both jobs and aligned them perfectly. She found her place and everything flows nicely. She's not a selfish person. She loves to give, she loves to share. If this is not you, then this card could mean that you should try to balance your home and work um, and live more efficiently. At the same time, make sure that you find time for yourself and practice self-care. Things are much easier when your batteries are always charged, so just make sure that you keep up this balance. The Queen of Pentacles also represents prosperity and security. You have worked hard to achieve a level of financial st stability, and now you're in a position to be generous with others. You're happy and willing to share your wealth and abundance with those who are around you, who, with people who you love. You have used your financial prosperity to build a comfortable home and equally you put the same amount of effort and focus on your work. This is a person who is compassionate, caring and practical. She has a down-to-earth attitude and she wants to create a calm and balanced life for herself. She is resourceful and creative but always practical when she deals with day-to-day -day issues as they come up. She's a person that is able to find straightforward solutions to fix problems with minimal fuss. Sometimes this card can represent a mother figure in your life, someone who's able to give you loving support and who helps you to overcome or work through influences that bother you from your past. She could be a teacher, a neighbor, a counselor, a mentor, or someone that you're very close, close to you. On the other side, it might be you yourself. In a work environment, the Queen implies, Queen of Pentacles implies that you are, you will be successful. You have gathered a lot of experience and a solid reputation amongst your peers. You are caring, you're nurturing, you're well liked. Um, everybody likes you and you're likely to have a good income and you're trusted with higher profile projects. You may also be responsible for leading and managing others. And your leadership style is go, it will be down to earth and practical. You always care that others achieve things and do well. 
if you're looking for a new job, the Queen of Pentacles is a very positive card. It indicates financial independence, success at work, and a strong desire to create stability and certainty in your career and finances. Just take it as a happy sign. You will find a job you enjoy and you earn the income you need to sustain a comfortable lifestyle. Financially, this card means that you will have this comfortable lifestyle with a good level of financial independence. Your wealth is continuing to grow and you lead an abundant and prosperous life. When, if you are single, this card could mean that you are happy just as you are. You like to be free and independent at this time because you have everything that you need to create a fulfilling life for yourself. If you're looking for love, this card could be a sign that you will meet this type of person or that you take on the nurturing role in, 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 the, in the new relationship. If you're already in a relationship, then this card could mean that you are giving your partner all the support that he or she needs. You are the, the nurturer. You support your partner emotionally and financially. You may be the breadwinner in the relationship and also take care of the home at the same time. Now, if this is the case, then just be mindful that you don't over contribute because otherwise you could be in danger of being used and that could be detrimental to your to any relationship. Just aim to strike a balance in how you both provide for each other. If you're thinking of becoming a parent, this card is a really positive sign that you will embody this, this kind of energy very soon. When it comes to your health, the Queen of Pent Pentacles suggests that you may need to make more time to focus on yourself first if you want your health to improve. Um, it's the same like when you fly somewhere. If you're flying with a small child, you always have to make sure that you are buckled in first before you buckle in your child. So don't neglect yourself over others and make sure that you don't run your batteries too low. If you always try and put the everybody else's needs before your own, your health may suffer. So ask yourself, how can you contribute financially? Um, in what way do you like to nurture others? Is your work-life balance, uh, balance working for you? So these are some of the questions that you could ask yourself. Overall, dear Capricorn, this is a fantastic reading for you. You have achieved a milestone of some sort. You have plenty of reason to celebrate. You are doing great financially. At work, you're respected and well-liked the same at home. So well done Capricorn. Let me know in the comments if your reading resonates with you and like and subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for more guidance and celestial wisdom and until then, have a great day.